Loves here. And today we are going to be taking a look at an application of Isotope's vocal synth. And so here, I'm gonna really quick, I'm gonna show you how to make this sound. So I'm gonna try and play the track for you, but it's gonna click like crazy because my computer, this is this is a, a very intense track. This is also in its final state. So it's got it's got a lot of stuff going on. It's called the Seeker. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to hear it without the clicks and pops, but just to show you a little bit, maybe get an idea, but it's not very intelligible with my screen recording going on at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not gonna make you sit through that, but you can go check it out. It's called The Seeker again. If you look it up on my YouTube channel, it'll pop right up. So let's talk about this. So what do you need to do this? What is going on? Basically, I have a piece of audio. I'm running it through Isotope's vocal synth, which retunes and processes the audio in a way similar to a vocoder. So uh, you need a channel with MIDI on it. Something sending out MIDI, and we'll talk about this in a second, how to set this up. And you need some audio. In my case, it's a vocal. So my vocal sounds like this. Well, it's not my vocal. It's a vocal I recorded. And in that sense, it's mine. But uh, here. Whoa, 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 hey, hey. Whoa, 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 hey, hey. Whoa. So it was just recorded a really fast thing. And that was a very profound sentence. And I just wanted something that could be ad-libbed here, and I this just wasn't really working. And so what we ended up doing was using vocal synth, which fit the vibe of the track way better, and it gave it that sort of surreal feeling. And uh, she actually does come in with some ad-libs over here and a couple other places. And so it worked out really well, merges really well. I'm actually using a vocal library as well here. And uh, if, you, if you wouldn't know, if you're not an audio person, you probably wouldn't know that she didn't sing some of these lines. So it's kind of an interesting ordeal, the sort of melding of all these vocal processing techniques. So anyways, uh, what we have here, so I have a vocal and it's nice because it's lined up and it, it has rhythmic meaning to the song. So I don't have to mess with rhythm or anything. It's already gonna be in place. Um, so, okay, let's talk about this. So what you have to do is you have to route your vocal to a channel. And so route it to a channel, da da da. I put it on channel six. And then on there, you're going to put a vocal synth. Uh, you're not done yet though. If you run it right now, it will sound probably like crap. Um, vocal synth is, takes a little bit of setup to use right. So first, you wanna make sure you're in poly mode. Toggles between monophonic and polyphonic. Uh, but if you're gonna play chords. So I was like, okay, I want that. Uh, and this is for the MIDI, the MIDI mode. You're also gonna wanna activate the MIDI option right here. You need that on in order for this to work. Okay, so now we need to set up some MIDI. We need to tell vocal synth what notes to play. And so what I have here is this is my MIDI. Uh, these are all the chords that I'm actually telling it to play. And you wanna be reasonable with your audio. Uh, generally, if you have like really high or low stuff, it's just not gonna sound that great. This does not make any noise by itself. It is, it is just instructions. Vocal synth takes the audio and will create the noise for you. So the way you set this up in FL Studios, at least it varies from plugin to plug from da to da. Um, but anyways, what you do is you get a MIDI out plugin. It looks like this. If you don't know where this is at, you can go in here and go to MIDI out. It's right here underneath the MIDI tab. And uh, I've, I've never been in a DAW that doesn't have one of these. So there you have it. You get a MIDI out. And then the important thing here is this is gonna send your instructions, okay? So whatever chords you want to play, you're gonna use this and you need it to be on a port. And so I set it to port 16, just sort of arbitrarily. So just pick a number. Generally avoid zero because uh, some th some other things can go down on zero depending on what you're setting up. And so it could, it, it'll work fine, but just to avoid problems in the future, generally, you I generally start at channel one and on and leave zero because sometimes it comes up for other things. So, okay, I put it on port 16. And then what I do is I go to vocal synth, right? And I need to tell vocal synth to listen to, to port 16. So you go into the cog icon and you say input port, port 16. For other plugins, it, depending on your DAW, this works differently, but right now, port 16. And so you're all set. At this point, vocal synth will now see your MIDI information. Now the MIDI, the MIDI doesn't make any noise by itself. So when you're putting in your chords, 
Um, you have to be playing your audio. So your audio will be going through vocal synth. And I know someone's going to make this mistake. So here, pay close attention. They must be playing at the same time. Um, I, it's just something that I know someone's just going to bang their head against the wall trying to figure out why it's not working. And then all of a sudden they're going to realize it needs to be playing at the same time. So your MIDI information and your audio have to be going at the same time for you to hear anything. And the reason is, is because it's going to be processing the audio and tuning it according to your instructions. Um, if the audio is going, you'll hear the audio. But if the, if the instructions are going and the audio is not next to it, you won't hear it. And so this also means that when there's audio, there will be sound. When there's silence in your audio, there will be no sound because there's nothing being processed by vocal synth. I mean, technically, there's like a small noise level signal there, but it's negligible. So... Okay, so let's pop open vocal synth. So this is vocal synth, and I haven't done like a crazy in-depth thing on it, but that's how you set it up, okay? And this this is just stuff that is annoying if you've never set it up and you're trying to figure it out. But it's actually, vocal synth, it's rather painless. This is a really easy setup. I don't, it's as smooth as any other one I've used. So the reason why I use vocal synth, why not like some vocoder or something? Well, vocal synth is like a, a sort of a, there's two basically vocoders. This one claims vocoder. I'm not sure what the deal is with CompuVox. Maybe there's some it processes differently, but it sounds like a vocoder. So to me, they're just two specially made vocoders. And you might be going, what's a vocoder? I have answered that in the FL12 effects series. Go look up the fruity vocoder video. But essentially, in a nutshell, your voice will produce frequencies. You're going to have a synthesizer at the same time produce, you know, sound. An os it's going to oscillate. Ideally, something with a lot of harmonics. Your voice will be... Your voice's frequencies will be compressed down to certain frequency ranges using filters. So it's like sort of like frequency, well, it's frequency quantization for your voice. So it's going to say if your frequencies are between, you know, 100 and 200, uh, put them to like 150 or something. You know, it's going to, it's going to push them all to a value. That's what quantize means. And then if it matches a frequency in your synthesizer, synthesizer that's playing, it's going to let that frequency out. And so it's great for data reduction. Vocoders were actually originally voice encoders. And so that's what they were used for. That's, that's pretty much my knowledge. I haven't done like an extensive study on vocoders. So excuse me if I got like some really technical details wrong, but basically that's what's happening. Okay. You So the synthesizer is really important because the more it overlaps with your voice and the way it overlaps with your voice will determine what frequencies come out. That's what gives the vocoder sound the vocoder sound. And then um, we also have this polyvox thing up here. This is, a really, um, this is not the same as a vocoder. It's a different process. This one will retune your vocals for you. Um, and it can even reproduce vocals and it's a whole other deal. But we're going to listen to each one individually. You can think of this if you're familiar with Pitcher in FL Studios. This is like Pitcher. So, okay. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and let's listen to the individual ones. So my voice is coming in. It meets my instructions and my audio. And what I have here is I need my pitch, my pitch correction turned on. If it's not on, uh, this won't work. So actually, you know what? I'm not quite sure about that. Just a sec. Let's find out. Yeah, it still works because we're using MIDI information. So that means that in the vocal ch in the vocal chain, this thing's gonna apply some some pitch correction. It's gonna center the pitch a little bit as it goes through your chain, um, because that's what its role is. Whether or not you have MIDI going on, if you have this on, it's going to ideally tune your vocal for you in real time. So the reason I like this is because it has a really smooth polyvox sound. So if I turn these other two off, we can listen to just the polyvox and hear. What it's doing. I, I principally came here for this sound, and if, if you look at my little mixer here, that's the one that is principally turned up. So you might be going, oh wow, okay, well then what were these other two doing? And also that's the sound I'm talking about. That's not the sound of a vocoder you would expect really out of a vocoder typically. I mean, it depends on your setup. So it's it's sort of, sort of the same. Um, it works on a similar principle, but it was a, it's been like modernized, if that makes any sense. It's like trying to compare a telephone now to a telephone way back when. You know, it's just not the same. They're the same idea, but they're not the same. So that's Polyvox. Let's listen to the vocoder. So you might be going, 
Okay, well, that's what the vocoder sounds like. And that's now this oscillator here, OSC, is the synth I'm choosing. And I can choose a bunch of different ones. For example, let's try the kitchen sink. So you're going to find one you like, but you might be wondering right now, why did I, why did I, why do I even have this in there? It doesn't sound like it sort of matches the same timbre. Uh, for this, it fills up the sound. And you don't really know it's there until I solo it like that. So as I play it for you, um, on those longer syllables, it like sort of comes out a little bit more. Um, but that's why it's so low. And then of course I have this computer vox on, which does basically the same thing. You see it also has an oscillator option. And this brings me to my next point. Like there is no oscillator option here. This is, is tuning in real time. So there's not really, it's a different process. But if we play it, So that's also in there. Now I'm I'm in, I'm processing this later on down the line, and I deal with things the way I want. But together, I thought they made a pretty cool texture. So, anyways, and that's really that's really it. Now you might be going, what are all these knobs? These are all like sort of specific to the to the thing we are using, and some of them aren't particularly useful technically, but they're really useful musically. So what does that mean? So for example, bats. Do I know what the crap bats means? Do I even know of another synth that has a knob labeled bats? No. But what I do know is that if I turn this around um, and say, and it also they give you descriptions of what everything's going to do, but a winged animal man effect. It's like, what the heck? It's basically, turn it around, it's going to do something musical and if you like it, keep it. If you don't, turn it off. And so I really appreciate things that do that because they generally control a variety of parameters at the same time. And so it's meant to be musical. It's not meant you're not supposed to overthink it with details here. So that's what these a lot of these controls are for. Um, and I'm assuming because it's computer vox, perhaps this controls number of bits in the signal or something. Adds digital aliasing. There you go. Something to do with digital audio. Uh, but all together... I really like the sound of this plugin. You can get a lot of sounds out of it between these. A lot of the demos weren't particularly impressive as far as the, the tutorials online for it that I've seen, just because um, they don't use this MIDI option. They like try and use only the pitch correction, and that's not the nature of the pitch correction. It's meant to be a subtle thing, not like the main thing. So, uh, yeah. When you're doing something like this, though, you can go pretty crazy. And hopefully you have some cool ideas. If you make something cool using a, te a technique like this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.